morning guys what have I got today for us I got very big soft plastics I'm gonna use big 7 inch 6.2 I think they are paddle tail I've got a 7 inch on this one got a big popper on that one and we're just gonna see if we can get some on the big plastics today not often I use this type of stuff um, should attract big fish we shouldn't get anything small on them um, so I'm gonna get excited as soon as I catch one but hopefully we get a few hits on it I do have a vibe there but if we go don't catch anything at all on them I might flick a vibe out as well but we've just got to find the fish hopefully the big plastics work all right let's go have a look see Well, I've been flicking this big 7-inch plastic for a while now. Haven't even got a hit. Very disappointing, really. I was hoping I could pull a big fish in on it. My jig head is a little bit light. I've only got 3 three eight jig heads. I reckon I need 3 quarters. Especially with these um, plastics I got. They're quite... Um, flotation's quite high. Alright, I'm going to try with the vibe and hopefully pull a few fish in. That one here, just swapped over the smaller lure. So it wasn't getting much action, I was starting to get disheartened. I was starting to get disheartened with the bigger lure, so I thought oh, I'll swap over the little one, at least catch a couple of fish, get me going. I think this may be a tailor. Decent size, by the feeling. I may have fouled something, spinning a bit. Yeah, I've got a snapper. I fouled him in the head. Good size snapper, actually. Hey, beautiful, look at that. That is a ripper of a snapper for the lake. Got him straight in the head. Yeah, it's a ripper of a snapper for the lake. Five got him straight in the head there. And Oh no, I've got him in the eyeball, damaged the eyeball. I may actually keep this one, just for dinner. Because I don't like throwing them back when they're a bit damaged. But yeah, he's a nice fish. Let's put him on the vibe there. Probably about 35 I suppose. But I'll put him out of the misery and put him on the ice. Oh, I, get, oh, I dropped him. That's something weighty there. Come on. Very weighty it was. Like a good flathead. Another one here. Feels like another snapper. Yeah. Oh, God. Look at the size of that, would you? Absolutely pathetic. Lures as big as him. Two snapper. The water is alive with fish here. Absolutely alive. Fish everywhere. I'm gonna get a big um, flip bait in there. It's a seven inch. So I'm going to try and get the bigger fish
can't get the light in there. Oh, that's not tiny. <laughs> Little tiny flathead, absolutely tiny. 30 centimeter job. Geez, it took a while to hook up this morning to a decent fish. It dropped a nice bloody earlier, but I've been trying to get a Jew target species always on the vibes. Again, I'm using the um, eight pound setup, so you really got to take your time with these ones. The eight pound, Let's get that net. Bloody beautiful. That's what I wanted. Makes it worthwhile when you get a nice dew. Just gotta watch that hook there, but beautiful fish. Look at him. Absolutely gorgeous. Perfect condition. Perfect condition fish. Really is a perfect condition. Nice healthy weight for the size that one. Alright, we'll get a measurement on him. Okay. Get that out of the way. Have a quick look on the brag, mate. Very beautiful. big 68 centimeters but really healthy condition fish really nice condition Pretty beautiful that is they go hard all right i'm gonna let that one go because i'll let them all go i'll let all the mull away go because i just love catching them Rather catch them than eat them, definitely. Alright, let's let him go. Swim him off. Look. Come on, mate. Oh, oh, oh. He 
took off. Nothing wrong with him. That's what we wanted. Made an absolute mess of my line and lure there. Ugh. Let's go again. Now I get a lot of messages of people asking me where to catch Mulloway and the real secret is there's no real spot to catch Mulloway. You've got to keep moving, you've got to find quiet areas and only fish those spots for like 5-10 minutes and then drift to new areas or keep moving to new locations. And um, it's too busy move to the next spot and just find a quieter location eventually you'll come across them i will be going through rigs and lines and different knots and stuff i used at the end of the episode so if you're interested in that hang around to the end and i'll do it the first time i've done that so well overdue what a monster squid oh what a monster just chased my jig up so I thought I'd Jesus that's a big squid that is huge for an arrow squid the size of that for a squid <laughs> for an arrow squid that's huge I'm gonna whack him straight out live because I can't help myself He would be a good eater, that one, but we'll get him out live. Another beautiful squid there. Oh. God, what have I got here? Oh. Third little snapper today. Third little snapper. Oh, look at that parasite on his tail. Yuck. That's disgusting. Oh, that's a big parasite. Let's take him off. There we go. Here, just like a right. snappery again. That's a flathead. Nice flathead. Nice lizard. You beautiful. And he's sandwiched that vibe in his mouth there. Good looking fish, but look at that. 50 centimeter size. You beautiful. Calm down, mate. Pretty beautiful. Yeah, not bad fish. 50 centimetre size. Get him back. Yeah. Maybe? I've got something. Oh, that's flabby. He's playing coy on me. He was just coming in. Uh, no, about the same size. Another 50. Pretty beautiful. A bit bigger. Getting up that 60. Beautiful. He's flatter the fat this time of year. He's about 60, but geez, he's heavy. Really solid fish. Oh, he's going, he's going to drop off here. He's going to drop off. Hope he don't spike me. Yeah, really fat fish for the size.
Yeah, have a go how fat he is. He's only about 55, but really fat condition. Geez, they're healthy this time of year. Anyway, that's about number five today, a flatty. Plus the Jew, the squid, and a few snapper. Not a bad day. Alright, let him go. Done all right, got the dew, got about six flooded, some snapper and some squid, so it wasn't a bad day. We've got some tailor as well, so fair few fish. I actually stayed out pretty late today. I stayed out till about lunchtime, a bit past, so not like me to stay that long. I'm feeling a bit sunstroke, actually. I might actually tie this episode into a rig episode because I've been getting a lot of people asking me how I tie my lures and rigs and line and hook size and whatever else. So I think I might tie this into a rig episode and run through all my rigs and paninoscas and lure setups and everything. I haven't done that yet, so about time. All right, flashback when I'm rigging up. Afternoon guys, look at this layout I got in front of me. Never done a rig setup episode before so I'll stitch it into the episode and there's quite a few different rigs I want to show you today I want to show you the loop knot I use on my lures I want to show you the reef setup Pananoska setup and I want to show you how I join my braid to my mono so pretty simple stuff and as you can see I got some chili here because I figured it'd be a pretty boring episode just watching me tie knots here so I figured I'd come in the backyard, chase the sunlight, getting quite late actually after work. But make it entertaining, I'll eat chilli while we're doing it. Should give you a laugh and should stop the boredom hopefully. So we'll start off with a lure. This will be the same with soft plastics, vibes, everything. You want that loop knot so you get full movement in your lure. But we'll start off mild. We'll go one of these jalapenos and yeah wait a couple of them add a bit oh shit anyway let's get this done so the loop knot you want to just do a loop like that you got your loop there nice and easy put him through put him through the lure and you want to pull that loop right up to the end of the lure just like that feed him through your loop really simple knot this guys feed him through your loop spin it about this is 30 pound line so we'll go about five times there we go what you want to do is go back through your end bit like a blood knot but you also want to come back through the loop as well which will lock it off and that's it Add a bit of moisture, pull all three ends at the same time, two ends, and that's it. That is the strongest loop knot you'll get for the, it really is the best knot you can do. And the good thing about this knot, that tag faces down, so you don't get any, you don't get any weed or anything catching on it. And it's just a nice, neat knot. You get full movement out of your lure, quick, easy to tie. Which that's what you want. You want a quick, easy lure to tie. Quick, easy knot. You don't want to muck around. All right, that's another serving of chili, I think. Ugh. Right. Okay, when I hit that stuff, I'm going to die. So, I'm working my way up to that. Now we're going to do the pan and Oscar. And everyone wonders what type of knot to use. Honestly, quickest, easiest knot, the blood knot. Put it through twice, loop it six times. Very similar to the knot we just did, but we don't do the pre-loop. And then you just go back through the hole. And that's it, quick and easy. See that? Just so fast, so quick and easy. That's what you want. You don't want to muck around. You don't want to muck around out there. You want to just get the job done. Oh, I think I'll go one more jalapeno, then we'll step it up to the crushed chili. The 
quicker I get this done, the less chili I have to eat. Alright. Hey, and Oscar. You want it about... Go a little bit further apart than that. You want your three-way civils. It's a Nita's rig. And... It'll keep you out of trouble. Stop your line twisting. And when I come off my little bit, I know like the old school people, they double up their line for the Pan and Oscar rig, but really it's not, it's not the stealthiest way to fish and the fish will see your line. So I get your Pan and Oscar, Pan and Oscar. You really only want 150 mil sticking out, just like that. And we'll tie a hook straight onto that. So blood knots are the go, because they're just quick, quick and easy. As you get into the thicker line, you may have to swap it up, but blood knots are so quick, guys. You can rig a whole Pananoska rig in a couple of minutes, so, and the proper way too, you know, none of this loopy, loopy stuff. And what I like to do for my sinker, I'll put a snap swivel on the on the end, and that way you can swap it out to whatever size sinker you want quickly, easily. You can see how quick I'm tying this. It's just really fast. Now hook size. You're fishing the outside, snapper and stuff like that. 4050s. You go on that bigger fish. You want to step up to the 60s with big baits, big strip baits, stuff like that. But you don't really want to go too much bigger than a 6.0. 4 to 6 for snapper and stuff. And it'll give you a good mixed bag. About 150 off. And that's it. Here's your Pan and Oscar rig. You just need to put your hooks on there. Pick your sinker size. Really quick and easy. Stick to your blood knots. Can't go wrong. I generally fish... Come on, boy. I generally fish about 20 pound when I'm outside. But I'm getting a lot of snap off, so I will step it up to 30. But... I won't go any higher than 30. You start to spook the fish too much. Okay, now we'll do our mono to braid knot. Which is, I think this is where we're going to step it up. Oh, this is going to hurt. This is going to make me tie it fast. There's no pain in this crush. I mean, there's no mercy. Crush chili. It's going to hurt. Oh, shit. Right, let's get this done. Oh shit. Woo! What you want for your braid the mono? Double uni. As I said, everything's quick and easy. You want it you want to be fast. But you want it to be solid too, so you just loop it around about six times again. Pull that tight. So all I did was lay the, the lines along like that. I looped that one up, get that mono on this end loop it around five six times again depends on your line thickness if you're thicker you want less loops give it a lubrication pull it tight and that's it you can see how fast it is see how quick and easy it is everyone does all these fancy stuff but keep it simple make your fish make your life easier yeah make your life easier and get shit done quick. Just get it done quick. Like that would never break. That is a solid rig. And yeah, it's just quick and easy. Let's get another one of these. Oh, get another one of these on too. Right. That's it. We've got the double uni knot for your braid, the mono. We've got the loop knot for all your lure choices. And blood knots and pan and Oscar rig. Keep your blood knots a great knot, quick, easy, and yeah, efficient. Maybe on the thicker line class, like over 40, you wouldn't be doing them, but I generally don't fish any more than 30 pounds. In the lake, my trace I'm running is generally 20. I'll sometimes step it down to 10, I mean to 15, and other times step it up to 30. It's just a matter of what's happening on the day. All right, will that punish me? And I got through it. 
So I think I'll call it that. And if you want to see more rigs, I might make this a weekly thing. Do a new rig every week and eat some type of new chili. And um, yeah, make it entertaining. All right, guys. If you ain't fishing, you're wishing. I'll see you on the water. Catch us.